Counselor Accents Podcast. Two school counselors who love their jobs. Oh, and they happen to have Southern accents too. Bless their hearts. I'm Kim Crumbly. I'm Laura Rankhorn. And together we are Counselor Accents. Little tag team. Well, thank you. Little tag teaming going on here. Um, well, Laura, we're calling this what? Here we go again. And uh, part is this, I thought you were going to go 2.0. Okay, I'll say the whole thing. Here we go again, virtual learning 2.0. It's all about inflection where you play. It, is. it really is because I thought you were talking about me. So we're talking about the title of our podcast. Here we go again. And uh, so, Laura, this is about being prepared. So may I, I know sometimes we like to share a story at the end of the podcast. May I begin with a story? Oh, uh, it's shaking it up a little bit. I like it. Okay. So, you know, I'm a history buff. As am I. And that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so, in 1945, two ships boarded 138 of England's finest sailors setting okay. out. For Which one were you on? Okay. That's hurtful. <laughs> it's hurtful. <laughs> Uh, setting sail for the Arctic. Their task was to chart the Northwest Passage. And I know I'm talking above your head right now. I know that I am. Just bear with me, okay? So they were, uh, the captain was John Franklin, as I said. And history has taught us a lot about the, this, uh, what not to do or what to do. What they learned, the biggest lesson about this expedi expedition's path to the pole is prepare for the journey. Obviously, they had not prepared. So on a trip to the Arctic, they carried 1,200 volume library book, a hand organ, China place settings for officers, glass wine goblets, and ser sterling silver flatware. They had fuel to last for the auxil auxiliary steam <laughs> engines for 12 days. Oh, my. So uh, the only uniforms that they had were the, the only clothes that they had were their uniforms, which were very thin and inadequate. So this was what they prepared for a two to three year journey to the Arctic. So <laughs> some Inuit Indians later said that they saw, because, of course, they got there and their boats got trapped within the ice, they saw several walking with dragging a wooden boat in their, in these uniforms. So, for years, they found over frozen parts of the Arctic backgammon games and uh, silver-plated sterling silver and all the entertainment you can imagine so ill prepared and you know really I give us all a pass when I'm comparing this to us being prepared for virtual I think we all got a pass in March because we didn't know what we were preparing for and I have to believe that this captain had no idea what he was preparing for but the lessons that everyone that came after him that were headed to the Arctic, they were prepared. And this is round two for a lot of people. A lot of people have tried to go traditional or they've tried to go hybrid and now they're going virtual. Right? Right. So that was my story. I, I, do, do, how, am I making this try to fit in my love history? It's a, it's a wonderful connection. And let me just say, you heard me burst out laughing. I did. And I, I heard the rest of your story and I felt really bad. And I need to give a disclaimer for why I burst out laughing the way I did. <laughs> it reminded me of the way that maybe you and I pack for a trip. <laughs> like, <laughs> where we find things that we think, oh, I might use this. Uh, I might need a place setting. I'm going to go uh, like this. Or let how many beef and cheddars can we pack for one trip? 
I mean, how many do we are we really gonna eat? Let's be private. Yeah. And so I once I listened to the rest of your story, I felt really bad because yes, because it ended up they were trapped. <laughs> it was insensitive of me. They had a good time until they froze. <laughs> <laughs> did they live or die? I hate to even ask, did they live or die? 138 went. They were trapped in the ice. They, for years, they found backgammon games and, and silverware. Uh, and I'm an optimist through and through, Kim, and I'm holding out hope that we'll find some of them. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, my thing is I do understand if he'd never been to the Arctic, maybe he did not know how to pack. But that second trip, by then yeah. he could have made it. Don't you know? If he'd have just had a do-over, he would pack have long some of those books and that hand organ. You it, know what I'm saying? And packed a little bit more coal. And how about a coat or bargain or two? It was the hand organ. When you said the books and the hand organ, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a hand organ is, but I imagine. Well, in 1845, that was the cool thing to have. It's like your iPhone. I thought you said 1945. That's why I thought you were on the boat. Oh my gosh, if this had happened in 1845, I would, I mean, in 1945, I wouldn't be telling this story because I feel like it had been too close. And what, this is what scares me about you in history. Of <laughs> course, by 1945, they understood the Arctic and what to pack for the Arctic. <laughs> but in 1845, it was a different story. So um, anyway, I, I just think that maybe he didn't know how to pack and maybe we didn't know how to pack for that first yes. round but we've learned some things and we have shared as you're still tickled over the hand order get it I'm out tickled over the I'm tickled the whole everything I'm sorry I, I'm sorry <laughs> but I really enjoyed that that story I really yes. that's, that's very it's a perfect story Thank you for sharing it. Uh, okay. It, I, I, it really is a great <laughs> connection. <laughs> I, I just want to learn. I may have an aftershock throughout this podcast just thinking about, like, the visual of me um, trying to pack for us going to Boston. Like, oh, I may need this. I don't in know. Pack to What's see the weather in Boston? Boston? I don't know. I mean, a good hand organ. I need that. <laughs> we may have a get together. <laughs> Have you packed your silver plated uh, <laughs> fork and spoons? All right. I don't know what accent I'm doing right now, and I want to apologize to anybody who. Well, we are counselor accents. We are. We do. We love accents. We love accents. Gosh. Um, okay. So I should have told that in an English accent because it was an English fleet. See, I don't even. I, Maybe I needed to see it on a map because I I'm imagining they're trying to get from Alabama up to the North Pole. Like that's how you needed. <laughs> that's so sad. I'm so glad you don't <laughs> teach history. It just scares me. Um, so this is a do over for a lot of people, and I don't want you to turn it off if this doesn't apply to you because it may. Or if you, however, everything that we're going to talk about. Is, is a lot of things that is just good practice. And I will continue when this is all over to do some of the things that we're going to talk about. And I don't so, want them to turn it off if I have offended them through my laughing. I, I just feel like somebody's going to say, well, uh, that was my grandfather that was on that ship in 1845. Gosh. <laughs> we're gonna okay, I'm sorry. With the, with the ship. Serious. We're sorry. This is what you get for starting with a story. You know, we save them. I know, and but I thought it was really good uh, yes. because I can understand he didn't know what to pack for the for the art, <laughs> and we didn't know what to do for this virtual <laughs> learning. Oh, okay. So as soon as you pull yourself together, I want you to give me tip one. Okay, well, we have divided this into sort of like academics, child safety. We've got sections. So 
let's start with number one. If I could go back in time, if I could tell my February self, you better get prepared. Then the number one thing I would have done, and I'm sure that all counselors have done this, get your Google Classroom together, add your students to Google Classroom or whatever contact, Seesaw, however you contact your students, get it in order. Yeah. Um, and that was a big lesson for me. And I was very envious of the, especially as a preparing students to go to high school, which I had to get transcripts ready and um, I had to get schedules, all of that done. And um, I was very envious of those. I, I was used to doing this in person with the kids. And so I, you know, everything I've done had been in person. I have learned a valuable lesson. And even though we have still, we're, it, it may happen, it looks like it might happen that we go virtual eventually, but right now, um, using a Google Classroom, even like last week, getting my middle school, the code.org magazine, the code, I think it's not .org, it's code magazine, but just putting in that, that into their Google Classroom, I'm seeing that I'm able to use it. So whatever method that you use get that in order but you can use it even if you don't go virtual or even even you know if you're traditional or hybrid yes and i love that you just brought that tip up to put the code magazine in there what inspire me always oh well thank you and you mentioned high school and at the end of this i'm going to ask you some interview questions as a high school counselor. Okay. Okay. So I'm just giving you a heads up that I'm going to put you on the spot for what, what sort of things should a high school counselor be doing? Um, also, thank goodness we got in touch with Tiana Walker back in the spring. Yeah. So Tiana talked all about Google and how to use Google products Yes. In school counseling, especially if you're a high school counselor, this would be hugely valuable for you to go back and listen to. And I will link that in our show notes. Yes. Um, yeah. I think, boy, they had it going on. She yeah. has it going on for high school. She was prepared for this. People. She was way prepared. She was. And I think these people who have gone through these Google trainings, like step one, step two, or whatever they are, what are the layers or whatever? This steps, isn't it? Like step one, step two. Three. I was thinking level two, level. Yes, it's like ninja fighters. So she and I don't even know if that's true, but they that Google does so much. Yeah, and we have learned so much about if, as we say, if you can do it traditionally and just figure it out, there's a way to do it virtually. Yep. Okay. Second tip number two. I would say is think about, and this may be more for elementary and middle school, but think about your class schedule. If you're seeing students, I think like we all got a pass on the first go round, but the second go round, we may need to be more proactive in how we're going to meet with our students. So do you want to put a screencast-o-matic video out once a week? Do you want to jump in on the teachers, Zoom, and in on the students? Either way, you're going to need to establish some type of schedule. So get that in order. Talk to the teachers if you're going to jump in on their Zoom. Find out what their schedule is so that you can fix your schedule to go with theirs. Um, if you're going to host a freestanding Zoom or Google Meet, make sure the kids know about it in advance and know they're prepared to be there. Um, any ideas on that? Uh, I had, I had a couple of thoughts. Um, of course they've gone out of my head, but it was some good thoughts when you were talking, but I didn't want to interrupt you. I, I want to go back a second with the Google classroom and putting your lessons in. Okay. Um, we have been told to prepare to go virtual and, um, not that we are for sure, but they've told us, uh, you know, be prepared. So, um, I have organized, and I started to organize this before, and this is just another tip, and, and I think you can use it for any level, 
but it's just that I know week one of a month, it's going to be a certain type lesson. You know, I'm going to use a, um, maybe a Nearpod one week. Okay. Week number two, I'm going to do a career lesson. Week number three, I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to use a picture book. I'm in, you know, maybe week number four, I'm going to share some STL tips that, and, and, you know, uh, I, I'm going to include, uh, some hands on activities kids can do. And so I've kind of made out a schedule that I, so you're prepared and, and it's not like, Oh, what am I going to do this week? You kind of have, you kind of know the points you've got to meet, but how am, how am I going to meet them and keep it interesting? So what are, what is my data show that I need to cover? You still need to cover those things. Yeah. So we know what our students needs are because we've done our whatever our surveys and, and I think SEL needs are huge this year. I mean, they, we know that for across the nation. So how can we meet those and kind of have that organized ahead of time? The other thing is invite other teachers to your Google classroom. And I'm not talking about necessarily a classroom teacher, but career coaches. Um, if they have something that they want to add in there, if you have mental health therapists, in your system or other people that can add lessons or ideas or activities or thoughts, uh, invite them to be a part of your Google classroom also. Good tip. Yeah. And that reminds me, your super, your supervisor and administrator. So to provide that, they know what you're doing and absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very so good. Invite those. It's very, it's, that's such an easy tool. It's such an yeah. easy tool. Yeah. Let's talk about small groups. If you have a small group that's going, make a decision now. If you go virtual, will that stop? Or will you try to figure out how to continue a small group virtual? Now, if you decide to continue it, let me caution you. If it is a sensitive topic small group, then let me also put this disclaimer here. Remember, we're not supposed to do any type of therapeutic small groups. That's just a freebie for you. Um, but if you're doing a coping skills and the students have revealed things, remember that you're not guaranteed confidentiality whenever you uh, open it up to this student is at this home and this student is at this home. And be very cautious that the people that the students have talked about Maybe standing over their shoulders or on the other side of the screen. Yeah. So, yeah. Maintain confidentiality mm -hmm. even more. Just be more cautious than you would be if you were just in your classroom. Yeah, and check with your district. Uh, uh, I would I would clear that with my district and what their policy is on um, confidentiality with counseling individuals or small groups, and make sure that you're following your district's lead on that. Yeah. And make sure that those students know when to expect to have their small group if you decide to continue it. And if you decide not to continue it, then you may want to go ahead while you're still in person and prepare them so that it's not just cold turkey quitting. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to similar, but how will you be contacted in the event of virtual learning? Uh, some people have put a in their Google Classroom, you can use a Google form, just letting people know this is how you'll contact me. Um, or will you have office hours? Will you have just an open Zoom where they just join as needed? How go ahead and establish how you'll be contacted. And Kim, you had a really, really good reminder to remember. Yeah. You, well, we use email. So, uh, you know, make sure that maybe you put your hours that you check your email and that, you know, I've seen some say that this is not checked 24 seven, but then I've seen others that have, you know, I, my office hours are from eight to three or whatever. And then if there's an emergency, they have contact information for maybe suicide hotline or, um, you know, other other air, other ways that they can reach out if there's an emergency, but they need to know that you're not going to get, you may not get that email because you have certain hours and, you know, just to step, put all that out there for your people who may be checking or emailing you. I think we're ready to move on to a little housekeeping. Oh, you, 
Are you see? Are you talking about mine? Are you looking uh, around? It says subtle, subtle hint. Yes. I gotcha. I would say remove save passwords on your computer. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's a it's a uh, temptation to whenever you put in a, a password and your computer says, "Do you want me to remember this password?" and you think, "Oh my goodness, yes, that would make my life so much easier." Well, if you have done that, clear those out because you never know during right now during this season, you may go home and if you don't have a laptop, if you have a desktop, then your computer is there for anyone to access. If your passwords are saved, anyone has access to your information. Yeah. So I would say clear those out because and that's just a good rule of thumb anytime, really. And I'm talking to you, Kim. I hear you. I see you pointing Our your lighted pencil. Asking, I see you pointing your lighted pencil. Yeah. Okay, anything on that? No, I just think that we've ran into those situations uh, before, not with us necessarily, but um, with that happening. And so, you, especially in our job, we've got to be even, I think, more careful. We've got a lot of sensitive information. Exactly. All right, we're going to talk about, well, I guess this could still go into housekeeping. If you have paperwork hanging out there, like special ed referrals or any kind of problem solving team, RTI, whatever your school calls it, data meetings, if you have any paperwork that needs to be done, go ahead and, and finish that up. Any 504s that are hanging out in limbo, figure out what you want to do with that. Are you guys going to put that on hold until you return to traditional? Or do you need to finish that up? So talk with your administrator, talk with the families, whatever you need to do, get those done. That I think that is good. I think that's a good uh, point. I think the the it's it's things that we could have procrastinated before on um, because you know you don't know from even if it's you being quarantined uh, and and it holds off um, progress on a student being. Do you hear Clanton? Do you hear my child? Yes. Um, you know, we just can't procrastinate anymore. I mean, people, you know, I mean, I've heard of too many teachers and friends who went home and then they don't, they're quarantined and yeah. when you're told to leave as we've had teachers this week. You know, you don't wait around. You got to get going and, you, and you've got things that you should have already had done. And it's just a good rule of thumb in general because you just never know. You never know when your toddler's going to get sick in, right. in a normal yeah. year. Right. Or Absolutely. You just never know. So, yeah. Or when you're going to win the lottery and want to go to Hawaii for two weeks. I know. You just don't know. Like, <clears throat> yeah. I think it's more the other way. I, I, I yeah. know you're trying, I was to, trying to. to I know you're trying to be optimistic, but yeah. yeah. Now your toddler gets sick or your brother-in-law <laughs> has a heart attack and you're out I for two weeks. I didn't want to go there, but that's hit exactly that for me right there. So you never mind. know. So you, yeah, any, any year, this is teaching us, you know, to, to, to value our time and be careful with our time. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move into child safety needs. And the first thing that I have written down here is Child Protective Services. Where are you on filing your reports? And please know that you have in our state, and I was thinking it was everywhere, but at least in our state, you only have a certain number of hours to report something. So if you're sitting on a report, get it reported. Don't wait. Um, so get that done. And I think I would even contact your social worker or state social worker or county social worker, school social worker, whoever you have, and let's compare lists. Talk about who's on your radar, who have you filed a report on, and just maybe even contact them to see can they do a double check on them during quarantine in the event you go quarantine or, or go virtual. And, you know, just provide that extra layer of safety for these kids you're concerned about. Absolutely. And I will tell you, I spoke to the social worker today and she was um, gathering her list of students 
who were, she calls it on her radar. So, and, and, and really shoring up their, their information and their address and everything that she might need. Those, those students that she is really concerned about if we go virtual completely and they're, uh, she wants a, a way to make sure that she has a list of her highest need students. And I think that's just a good, a good thing for, school counselors to do is to make sure that you've got your information on those students who are on your radar, that mm -hmm. those students who, who you are most concerned about. And those are the ones that if you can't go out, you, you know, I, I, I have called the HR when we were off just because I was just letting them know, you know, you have means to visit, you know, what's going on there. So get a list of those students. And I have been, as you know, Laura, I have a notebook with all, all of my students' information. And, and uh, I've been lugging that big thing back and forth just because if something happened and I couldn't come back the next day, I've got everything I need right there. And I have been this year transferring everything over in onto my computer in Excel. So uh, I'm trying to just, make that process easier I guess this has taught me that but in the meantime even my notes from last year I want to know so I can go back if I have a if something comes up this year I can see so I'm, I'm lugging that back and forth uh, so you know ha have a way to keep the information of those students who you know are going to have needs have the greatest needs very good Speaking of needs, think about the students that are on your, uh, if you do backpack meals or weekend meals, anything like that, think about those students that you provide meals for and maybe contact the parent, find out what their needs may be in the event you go virtual and figure out, I mean, talk to somebody about how to take care of those needs. Whoever is providing your backpack meals, is this something they can continue if you guys go virtual? Or talk to a local church, talk to your school cafeteria and see what plans are in place. Just ask the questions. Yeah, absolutely. Where, where, uh, can these, where, uh, can folks get help, clothing, food, all of those things? Um, those community services, make sure that you have that information. Yep. That you can get to parents for sure. And that, I think, is a good lead-in to, um, this one is time-sensitive because I'm thinking about where we are and the, the days that are approaching. Does your school, are you, I say that a lot of times we're the gatekeepers of the holiday provisions. So are you in charge of providing Thanksgiving meals or Christmas gifts, things like that. And if so, figure out how to contact these families. How are you going to get sponsors for gifts? When will they drop them off? If you're virtual, when will the parents come pick them up? So go ahead and think in that direction and get your affairs in order when it comes to holiday meals, gifts, whatever. That's really good. Uh, you know, Laura, this year, um, and I, I think this, this is, this may be something I continue to do, but instead of it being school, um, where I took it outside into community agency and I partnered with them thinking that if we closed down, that community agency would still have the means and the availability to, to continue on where I may not have that. So with the Thanksgiving meals, I went through a different agency, so it's not really school-based this year. It's going, it's partnering. I guess I partnered yeah. more so that pickup and delivery and all that will not be, will not take place at the school. It will take place at these other agencies. Very good. Yeah. And I'm just going to throw this in there. Since you said that, I'm going to throw this in there. Um. You're so good to communicate with your advisory council. This is an area where your advisory council can help you. Absolutely. Figure out how to get gifts. They, they can help you get your sponsors. I'm in a situation right now where I need about 
five more sponsors, and it was actually my mother, one of our fans. She said, why don't you contact your advisory council? I know. You're muted. Because she listens to us. I just spit. Yeah. She listens yeah. to us. She knows. And I'm sure she left us a review, too. I like, why don't these people <laughs> listen to their own advice? Yeah. So, um, okay, so contact your advisory council. And I also have written down advisory council for this next one. And I, you're going to need to speak about this one because you're, I've watched you in action on this. You're amazing. I've really built that up, and it's about, I'm about to drag us down. Oh, okay. it's bad. But grief protocol. We need to have a grief protocol. You are the queen at, like, we need to do a whole podcast on how your grief protocol because you're amazing but it, it, it's come through a sad sadly yeah. it's come through experience and having to having uh, gone through several situations that that I've learned lessons what to do and what not to do but you're absolutely right how do you handle grief for students and it it doesn't necessarily have to be tied to this pandemic but we do know that we have we we have lost family and family friends and students have lost family and so that is definitely part of it but in addition in a, in a year you know things happen and in in a regular year and so how do you reach out virtually um and you need to go ahead and and think ahead how would that look because when it happens usually we don't have a warning right uh, so, um, you know, how, how that's always just important to always have is this is what I would do, you know, if something happens to a member of our school family, student, teacher, whatever. But how would that look if you were doing that virtually? You know, so yeah. that's something that you need to have thought out and have a written plan of how that would look if you had to do that tomorrow. You know, yeah. So, yeah, that's a really good tip. Yes. The reason you have that to my advisory committee is because they 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 support me. They're they're part of that. If in a traditional sense, in the traditional setting, there they are a part of that process. So it's something that I have not worked through myself on how, exactly how that would look virtually. Yeah. yeah. But there are some ideas. But yeah, that's that needs to be something that is put in put in a plan. Yes. All right. Um, talk to me about if you're a high school counselor. What sort of things would a high school counselor do? Well, you know, the great thing about high school counselors, I think, is they've already been using social media for a long time because that's just how high school students communicate. Um, so I think that they've been better at this than we have because they've used Twitter, they've used um, uh, Instagram, they've used these things to get information out to their students already. So um, I think setting up those Google Classrooms to get that that specific information out to freshmen, that specific information out to you know all sophomores and juniors and to seniors, so specific Google classrooms, and um, I would you know definitely, and I, like as I said, I think they've already done such a great job at getting college information out, which I feel like is so vital for uh, that that junior and senior high school counselor is they're they're getting that information out to the students through the colleges. Colleges are are doing things differently now. I mean they're they're um, they're making it a little easier to get enrolled. They're they're uh, extending dates. They're you know uh, they're trying to work with the schools, I think. So they already have it going on. Um, career lessons, I would really, that 
encourage if you have a career coach to partner with them to get career information out to your students because that's that's so important and also I know that you know high school counselors don't have a lot of time for SEL um, as much maybe as they would like I'm sure not as much as they would like but I think it's important there are a lot of great sites out right now a lot of I, I'm, I'm just amazed at um, you know, common sense and um, even PBS SEL for older kids. There's a lot of things out there that you can share out, even if it's not recreating a lesson, but it's already there to help support kids. Because, uh, you know, I think that we're dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety because these kids are older and they understand a little bit you know this they're feeling the effects of the economy and the uncertainty of the future um and so i think really finding a way to get information out to those students sel you know and if you have to partner with therapists or whatever to offer help to these older students and I just talked to a friend who's a social worker today, and he said he really feels like more than ever students are going to start dropping out of school, just just dropping out, because they cannot handle the virtual world. And, um, you know, he had met with a student who had quit last week and had had coffee somewhere, and he was trying to talk to him, you know, about why. And he said, I just feel like we're headed in this direction. Uh so we really have got to support these older kids and high school counselors have so much on their plate. If they can partner with any other uh, folks that can help them with the SEL stuff, I think that's going to be important. Look for, look for people that can help you. Well, that's a good point. And my favorite professor, um, Dr. Townsend taught high school. And so she always talked about how they're still kids. They and are. Mm -hmm. We don't need to, like, let's still share the children's books with them. They yes. still enjoy the mind, yeah. the mental break of being read to and just a simple children's book. They're, they still have overarching themes and principles in them that we can all relate to. Yes. So um, it's really hard. I, I had the luxury of being the emotional counselor. Uh the person who dealt more with the social emotional side. And then my partner counselor, he dealt with the, uh, what we, you know, the scheduling and the, you know, that kind of thing. So I had the luxury of doing lessons and those kinds of things with students and finding a way to make that work. And, and yes, it is, it, I think there's never been a time in history that kids need that SEL support than they do now. Yeah. But as I said, the, I think high school counselors, uh, have always the best meet the kids where they are. And that's been through social media for a long time now. So we may need to extend it to past college is what I, I'm just encouraging to, to expand it to, um, to help them with their emotional side too, you know. Well, that's a great segue to our last point, which is the thing that we heard the most whenever we all shut down before was I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. And we talked about how, you know, if we could go back in time, we'd hug them one more time and we would let the kids know how much we care about them. And we're in this place right now where we have an opportunity every day until, if it happens, we have a chance every day to love these kids while we have them. And so it's important to do that while they're under our care. And, and Laura, some don't have that. No. Uh, a lot of counselors listening are virtual already. And so, you know, we have, we have, um, Saw some great things that counselors are doing to share the love, you know, just checking in every day or posting a picture of themselves with a coffee mug, you know, lifted up in cheers or, you know, just making those connections in a way. I'm just amazed at, at how uh, creative school counselors are. And um, so, you know, yes, if they're still traditional, you have that opportunity, you know, and it's the it's the best if it's in person and, and you can, and you can, um, 
you know, tell them that you love them and that you're there for them. But there's a different, you know, there's a different way of doing things. And, yeah. and, we can, and, and don't miss that opportunity, even if it's virtual, to reach out and let them know that you're there and that you're thinking about them. So. Yeah. Very good. Anything else you want to add? I, I have a story. Oh, we have to hear you. I feel like my story was enough. Yeah, I think my story of frozen sailors is probably. <laughs> Go ahead. Read okay. Your story. Go ahead. Well, did you have anything to add to that? To what? Your whole podcast tonight? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant my story about the sailors. Other than that overriding, overarching theme was be prepared. Don't go in the Arctic with go with our packing list. list. With our packing list. So tell me your story now. Well, it's, it really isn't going to hold a candle to yours. Well, thank you. Good. I went. But I've been in. I've been sitting on this one for a while, and today's the day. So at the University of Chicago. They did an experiment. You always start nodding like, oh, I've heard this one. And all I've said is. The nod is the encouragement nod. Okay. It's a but it makes me think you're trying, because you are a one-upper. I am a one-upper. But no. you're like, oh, yeah, I've heard this one. Mm -hmm. Well, usually everybody has heard your stories, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um. So... <laughs> At the University of Chicago, they did a an experiment using two rats. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Peta. I'm <laughs> sorry that we're talking about animals and rats being experimented on. But it's it's nothing really dangerous. So I think no rats were harmed. <laughs> but <laughs> Good manicure for the rat. Go yeah. ahead. What was it? So they put one in a cage, inside a cage. They put one in a in a cage. And they left one free inside the cage. And so the one that was in the cage would see the one that was running free. Every now and then the one in the cage would make a little distress call, as a rat may do. And so what they were wanting to do was see, would the free rat go release the caged rat? And so what they found was that the free rat would hear the distress call. Go and try to open the cage, and eventually he worked with it enough that he did learn how to open the cage. And even though there wasn't the payoff of a reunion, he would release the animal, even though I guess they were in separate holding rooms or whatever, but he would release him. This is the greatest thing I thought about this story. When the free rat was given like chocolate chips for a meal, he would save some for the rat that was caged. And so what they found was it was a study in empathy. And they realized that they were seeing empathy, that there was a need. And even a rat figured out how to fill a need and go above and beyond to provide food for this other rat that was in captivity. So anyway, they realized there was selfless behavior even within the that is very interesting. And if I have ever set a mouse trap out, I am sorry. Hmm. Thinking about the little hands and the little chocolate chips, I just can't stand it. I, you know, I didn't think about it like that in my mind. They were just safe, and I didn't think about the mouse trap. Although one time my husband didn't want to set a mouse trap, and I said, "No, are you crazy?" I said. That is a mother mouse, and she is going out to find food for her baby. <laughs> and if we set a trap, those baby mice are going to be saying, no, "Mom's coming, Mom will bring food. She's coming." <laughs> That's why I see rats running around your house all the time. <laughs> and so we led them off with a flute, <laughs> the pod popper. Yes. Okay. That's enough. It is time for me. You can tell that we're recording this late at night because yeah. 
You're a little bit freer than you normally are in the morning. You're very uptight when we do this in the morning. Am I? No. Because no. I can be. You know I can be. I, I heard it this morning when I talked to you. So, yes, yeah. I do know. Anyway, hang on tight, friends. We're going to get through this and um, just help each other through this hard time. So, it's just, it's just a time. Bye. Bye-bye.